What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. Hope you're all having a great Sunday so far. Today we're taking a look at a silencer that I've been stoked on ever since I heard the first rumors of it becoming an actual thing. Now they are a little bit difficult to get, but thanks to my friends at Shooting Surplus, they were able to send one out for me to test today. So huge thank you to Shooting Surplus and a little bit more on that later. The silencer is coming from one of my favorite manufacturers in the industry right now between the Honey Badger, Sugar Weasel, Mini Fix, and all of their silencers. We're of course talking about Q and today, we're taking a look at their new Erector 9. The Erector 9 from Q is the definition of modular. It has not only been dubbed the quietest 9mm silencer, but it's also the lightest at only 8 ounces in its longest configuration. It is of course chambered in 9mm, it has a diameter of 1.375 inches. Again, 8 ounces fully assembled in its longest configuration and it comes in with a fully assembled overall length of 8.7 inches. For attachment options, it comes with a half by 28 piston, which makes it great for all of your different pistol applications. And it's constructed out of stainless steel, aluminum, and just like all Q products, it is clear anodized finished and also heat treated. Now, I'm not normally one to talk about packaging, especially with products in the firearms industry, but Q is one of the few companies who actually takes pride in this stuff, so we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing here. Portsmouth, New Hampshire, USA, live, free, or die. Really nice box. Maybe not quite as cool as the Trash Panda and the Thunder Chicken box, but hey, still really nice. So inside of here, we have some instruction manuals, safety information, fine print stuff. And here is what we are presented with. We have the can itself and a nice little carrying sleeve. Erector 9. Q obviously makes premium products, so I would expect premium packaging like this. This is definitely a super nice touch, especially when you're spending a lot of money on a product like this. Now, I'm going to be testing a lot of different configurations of the silencer today, so I'm gonna sort of break it down now just to show you how it works. That way we don't have to sit here and do this while we're out there on the range testing it. Like I mentioned, the definition of modular, there are a ton of different pieces here allowing you to put this in whatever configuration you want. We're gonna start with the end cap and move all the way back to the actual piston. So right on the end here, we have the front cap. This thing is too tight like mine was when I first got it. You can just use a standard wrench to take that off and that basically goes for almost all Q products. Because this thing is modular, it is obviously fully serviceable. So there you can get a look at the interior baffles and each ring starting from here down are all baffles. With the front cap and the first baffle here, they do allow you to put a wipe in there if that's something that you're interested in. Keep in mind that if you do put a wipe in there, it has to sit below this inner ring and it's going to make the first few shots a lot quieter, but it also will increase the back pressure and it's gonna make this thing a lot dirtier and it could also change your actual accuracy with the can. So I'm not going to take all these apart right now. We're going to start by shooting it in the longest configuration, but these baffles right here simply twist off and then you can remove these all the way down the line. So we have one, two, three, all the way down to nine. Then when we get to this baffle right here, this is the actual blast baffle. Below that is the encapsulator. I believe I could thread the front cap right onto the blast baffle, so we might try that throughout the video, but that is getting pretty dang short. And then coming down to the very end, if we remove this piston housing, that is where you will find the piston itself, the piston spring, and that is pretty simple. And that's the entire assembly right there. Here's an inside look at the encapsulator and you can see the first baffle right there. So I'm excited to test this thing in all different configurations. It is very easy to assemble. You can hand assemble all of this, but as you start shooting this, I'm assuming it's going to get a little bit gunked up from keeping all those gases in there. So right now I'm putting it back to its longest configuration. Just gonna go hand tight with these baffles for now. I don't wanna go too tight because we are gonna be taking this thing apart during the testing. However, if you do run into any issues with pulling these baffles off, they do include two tools right here in the box. Both of these are exactly the same. It's just like a little clamshell tool. And then these little metal pegs in here interact with the grooves on the actual can. So if I wanna take off the front baffle and it's too tight, I will put this on there, twist it until it locks up. And then I could try to hold this with my hand, but if that's even too tight, then you have a secondary tool in there so you can remove whichever section you so choose. 
Now for today's testing, I had a lot of different pistols to choose from, but I figured since this silencer is so damn light, it's modular, I can make it really tiny, might as well pick a small, lightweight gun that I'm familiar with. So of course, we have the TS-43X. Now before we get into testing the silencer, I got a few updates on this thing for you guys. If you are one of the lucky 100 out there who was able to pick one of these up, I have made some more modifications to this gun as new products came out. We released this thing two summers ago now, and since then there have been some new options out on the market, which I of course have changed out a little bit. For today's testing, obviously we're shooting a silencer, so I put a Danger Close Armament drop-in barrel in here. These are all match grade. It's got a nice thread protector on it, and those are available right now over on their website, as well as my signature TS-19 barrel if you are into shooting Glock 19s. And then the final thing, would be an optic change. At the time that we released these guns, the only micro compact that was on the market that was readily available was the Shield RMSC. And that optic was great for the time, but now as we have progressed a few years, there are some better options out on the market like the Holosun 507K. Now these are relatively the same footprint as the RMSC, which these guns originally shipped with. However, this one you can actually turn off. I didn't like that I couldn't turn the shield off because over time the battery eventually died and I figured, well, might as well try some of the new offerings out on the market. I do really like the RMRs. The normal size ones are probably my favorite red dot optic out there. However, the micro version, when you're mounting that up to a pistol like the 43X, you have to get rid of the rear dovetail, which I don't really care for. So the Holosun 507K has a little bit of a cut out there. That way I can still basically co-witness. I can still see my iron sights through the actual optic. It does have adjustable brightness. I can turn this thing off if I'm not carrying this gun that day. And overall, I think it's going to be a better optic, but I'm not gonna say that until we actually get some testing done. If you already own a TS-43X out there and you are interested in upgrading from the RMSC to the Holosun 507K, you do need to do a little bit of modification. So I dropped the gun off at DCA and they were able to basically take off a little bit more material. That way I could mount up the 507K. And this is a service that they're offering over on their website site under I believe the accessories tab it's just a hundred dollars to recut the slide and refinish it so if that's something that you're interested in you can check that out over on their website now since I just threw this barrel in today let's get a baseline of how this gun shoots with a new barrel might need a little bit of time to break in and I've got a few different ammos to work with today in my right hand here we have some regular old 115 grain FMJ and then over in my left hand we have 147 grain I've had this ammo for a long time and there has not been a single gun that I've put it in that it ran flawlessly. I don't even remember who this came from, but it has a flat nose on it and flat nose rounds going into pistols tends to sort of hang up from time to time. So I'm gonna shoot 10 rounds of each of these before we get into the testing and then whichever one runs better, we'll probably use that for the rest of the testing. All right, up first we're going to start with the 115 grain. I think this barrel is going to take just a little bit to break in because the slide was a little bit tight. So we got a full mag. Let's just shoot into the dirt to see how this thing feels. Seems to be running that pretty good. Now let's go to the subs. These are gonna be snappy coming out of this little light platform. That one failed to eject. Not a big fan of this ammo. Man. Ammo sucks. So that stuff kinda worked, kinda didn't. So because of that, I'm probably going to do the testing with 115 grain, which is probably the most common. And then once I find the configuration of the Erector 9 that I think will work best for this, then maybe we'll try to run some of that subsonic. All right, first up, we're starting with this thing in its longest configuration. I removed the thread protector from the DCA barrel thing threads on nicely and although it looks out of proportion it's actually pretty well balanced 
being only eight ounces on there, it actually feels really nice and it's only gonna get lighter and shorter from here. Now I'm gonna risk it and completely take my ear pro out again, shooting 115 grain. Let's see how this thing goes. Ooh. Oh man, definitely a little bit of blowback because this is going to be the longest configuration. If there was a wipe in there, I would feel it even more, but damn, definitely hearing safe even with the supersonic ammo. A little bit warm to the touch, but not bad. Now you always wanna make sure the gun is clear and locked back, of course, when you're messing with the suppressor on the end. Instead of removing the front cap every time, I'm just gonna twist off the first baffle with the front cap on gonna take off the next baffle I'll throw this back on and now we're down to eight baffles plus the blast baffle ten more rounds let's see how long I can go without putting my ears in man Running flawlessly, which is not always the case with a silencer on a Glock, especially a 43X. Now let's go down another baffle. Now we are down to seven baffles and then the blast baffle. We're getting probably close to not being hearing safe, but as of now on eight, it was still good. It's looking more and more right at home on this pistol. Let's do 10 more. Again, running flawlessly. My ears not ringing, so seems to be safe. Again, we'll remove another baffle. And now we're down to six plus the blast baffle. Still hearing safe, which is very surprising. Obviously not as quiet as the full length on there, but damn, this thing is impressive. And now we are down to five plus the blast baffle. This is getting to a configuration where I would be happy with this right here. Looks really good. Hopefully it's still hearing safe, but I think we're gonna have to throw the earplugs in pretty soon. Here we go. Still good. I don't know how. I don't know how this thing is so quiet. <laughs> Now because it's so small, I may have to wait a little bit to pull another baffle off. The blast baffle is definitely one of the hottest parts right now though. And now we're down to four baffles and then the blast baffle. Still running flawlessly, still hearing safe, which I don't understand, it's crazy. Definitely did get a little bit louder when we moved from five to four, so I'm assuming on the next one might need earplugs, but we'll see. Now we are down to just three baffles. The gun is getting super dirty, so we may start to see some malfunctions here, but the main thing is figuring out if it's hearing safe. 10 more. Didn't lock back that time. Don't know if that's a suppressor thing or a dirty thing. Let's pull another baffle out. And now we are down to just two, two baffles. I can't imagine this is going to be hearing safe still. So that is right on the cusp of where it's gonna start bothering your ears which is insane. I guess we'll go down to one baffle now. And now we are down to one. <laughs> now I'm not gonna recommend shooting this without ears in, but I'm gonna shoot at least one round to see what it sounds like. It's still like right on the cusp. Like I feel like I could shoot like this, but I'm gonna throw my ears in for now. Even with just one baffle and then the blast baffle on there, it still takes a ton of the bite off.
There we had the failure to feed. Now I said I wasn't sure if I was gonna do this or not, but let's pop the front cap off and just put it directly onto the blast baffle. And now we're down to nothing, just the front cap right on the end of the blast baffle. I'm not recommending that you do this with your Erector 9. I doubt this is something that Q would recommend, but it might be okay. I'm just gonna put five rounds through here just to see for science. I'm gonna go one ear out for the first shot too. It, it's crazy because that still takes the bite off with just that. I am gonna throw my other ear in though. So we didn't get locked back there, but dude, this thing is so impressive. Let's actually see if it'll run the 147 grain like this. I doubt it, because this ammo sucks, but let's see, one ear out. Yep, still need an ear in. It's crazy, straight up crazy. Now one final thing that I wanna do is put this back into the configuration that I personally like the most and shoot a couple more mags and then I'll come back for some final thoughts. So I've decided that four is the ideal setup, at least for this gun, shooting 115 grain. No ears, hearing safe. I don't know how Q does that, but here we go for some more. That steel is louder than this thing. How? How? I don't get it. <laughs> it seems like four baffle configuration also allows it to run better. As soon as I got to three and then started going down, had a little bit of trouble going back into battery. So that's it, that's the setup. All right guys, now for some final thoughts on the Q Erector 9. This thing is now, hands down, my favorite silencer on the market. Super lightweight, modular, which makes it fun for testing and shooting. If you want something that is insanely quiet, you can have all the baffles on there, or you can do what I just did in this video and sort of fine tune it for whatever gun you want to keep it on. I am insanely impressed with how hearing safe this stayed from nine baffles all the way down to four and even three baffles. I'm able to shoot this thing without hearing protection and it's just been incredible. And that's not even with subsonic ammo. So once I get some good subs that will actually run through a gun like this, then it's just gonna be even quieter and it's gonna make this thing even better. I'm not one to shoot suppressed handguns very often because a lot of times it will not run reliably and it's not great for testing, but this thing ran pretty great the entire day. So in the future, if I'm ever testing out some guns that have a threaded barrel on them, there's a good chance that you're gonna see the Erector 9 in that video. Now, just like a lot of Q products, these things are not always easy to come by. You can check out their website and occasionally they will come in stock. However, I picked this one up through Shooting Surplus. They sent it out for me to test for this review. So thank you guys so much for doing that. If you're having trouble finding any cool products from Q, like the Honey Badger Mini Fix or any of their silencers, I would definitely recommend checking out Shooting Surplus. They do have a lot in stock right now as I'm filming this, but if they don't happen to have what you're looking for in stock, you can also sign up for their email notifications to be first in line to know when these products are back in their stores. So if you guys have any questions on the Erector 9, let me know in the comments down below. And I believe that's all that I had for today. So if you guys are new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every other week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.